You know what guys? I think it's about time we built the ultimate all AMD gaming PC. If you have a big, massive, wallet in your pocket, then it might be time to upgrade with today's video sponsor, The Ridge. This is a wallet like no other. I love the compactness. Not only do the designs look sick, each wallet is made from durable materials, meaning there is a lifetime warranty. Take it for a test drive for 45 days. If you don't like it, you can get a full refund. My favorite design has to be North Shore. Go get yourself 10% off using code IFR at ridge.com forward slash IFR. I mean, what do you have to lose? It's a money back guarantee. I'll leave those links down below. This is the X570S Carbon EKX motherboard and I thought it was about time that we gave AMD some love and what a better way to do this than an all black premium looking motherboard. The motherboard has optimal cooling with the VRMs also cooled with liquid. The NVMe drives are also cooled with a classy heatsink and the chipset actually has a fanless cooling designed for no noise. Our best Ryzen CPU we have is the 5950X. It is a seven nanometer processor with 16 cores and 32 threads with a boost clock of 4.9 gigahertz. This means that not only is it a fantastic gaming CPU, but it can handle workloads thanks to its high core and thread count. Due to the fact that we're also gonna be using the PowerColor Liquid Devil 6950XT, we can also enable SAM and play with Fidelity FX to get more performance out of our AMD hardware just using software. We want to keep all of this high-end hardware as cool as possible. The motherboard actually comes with a nickel-plated copper and acrylic lock which cools both the CPU and the VRMs. It does have a little flow meter integrated which is pretty cool because I don't like inline flow meters and of course the block has integrated RGB. I want to take advantage of Gen 4 NVMe speeds, so I decided to go with not one, but two FireCuda 532 terabyte drives. These drives are some of the fastest on the market, achieving read and write speeds of 7,000 megabytes per second. So for any content creators out there, you can transfer files to and from each drive fairly fast, while gamers can have their favorite games load with incredible speed. Not to mention the PC's fast boot times. Each heatsink also already has thermal pads pre-applied. I decided to go with the Trident Z Neo DDR4 RAM, which is optimized for AMD. This particular kit is 32 gigs, which is plenty for today's gaming titles and future proof for a few years to come. Creators will also benefit from having the extra RAM. Some of those applications can get pretty demanding. This is such a unique case that I really wanted to build in this week, the Azaregis. While I wouldn't necessarily call it the most cooling friendly case, with only support for two 240mm radiators and a fairly small footprint inside, it looks pretty cool and it's not the usual rectangle that we're always used to seeing from most companies. This case sits on a stand which kind of gives it a trophy vibe. Apart from that, the case is fairly standard with plenty of room at the back. The case fits up to ATX size motherboards. Just be mindful, if you want good cable management, I'd actually install the CPU power before screwing in the motherboard so that you can run it beneath. I decided to remove the pre-installed fan and use the Azza Hurricane 3 RGB fans. I've not tried these fans before, so I wanted to see how well they performed and looked. Straight out of the box, they did feel a little cheaper. However, that does not necessarily mean bad performance, and that could be great for someone on a budget. I 
I was originally going to use two slim radiators, however I did not feel comfortable using them with this hardware setup, so we maxed it out to what could fit. Two Thermaltake Pacific CLD 240 radiators with 40mm thickness and 25 FPI or fins per inch, meaning that we have now just increased the surface area by packing in more fins. The only thing is, how will these ASA fans handle the static pressure? The GPU is the brand new Power Color Liquid Devil 6950 XT. This is currently the top end GPU of AMD's lineup, and this particular GPU is pre blocked for optimal cooling with a nickel plated copper block. The GPU is also much smaller than most GPUs available, and I'm glad this is the case because I was a little worried about the GPU even fitting into the case. GPUs are just getting way too big these days, it's ridiculous. This GPU requires three 8 pin connectors for power and has integrated RGB control through the Devil's Own software. I want to make sure we have plenty of power for this high-end system, so I went with the Tough Power PF1 1200 watt power supply. This power supply also has an integrated RGB fan, which will tie in nicely with the overall look of the build. It is also platinum rated, which I think is a nice addition of efficiency for a high-end system. Leon Lee actually released their new Strowman Plus V2 cables and wanted us to give them a try in a system. They now finally have a triple 8-pin option which most high-end cards of this current generation require. What I really like about these cables is the fact that the RGB portion can now be unclipped and installed to the opposite side of the cables which was a major issue depending on the orientation of the GPU power connectors. Now due to the fact that this is such a small case, I was able to utilize the EK FLT80 DDC combo. I managed to screw it into one of the PCIe case brackets and utilize a little double side tape to keep it from pivoting while screwing it in held it up. The FLT80 I'm finding very helpful more and more often with how stupidly big GPUs are getting filling up the case. Due to the fact that this case has gold accents, I actually went with some gold fittings from Thermaltake and I wanted to fill out the remainder of the build with 16 millimeter tubes. Nothing simple straight from one port to the other, but making sure to incorporate a few bends and curves. 